Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming out again. I always say that, but I know you have to come out, but I do appreciate you coming out. So what's the point of today's? Got to get my computer straight out. So what's the point of today's lecture? I'm going to go over quickly this whole ontology thing you've read about in the Herd book, because I don't think it's explained well, but I think it's very important. First of all, ontology kind of this focuses on reality. To what extent, now if you've taken me for research methods, statistics, POS 160, etc., I go over a lot on ontology. For here, I just want you to understand ontology is the study of reality. To what extent do we live in the same world? Because we live in a social world with intersubjective understandings of the world. So when we talk about ontology, one person might see one group as a terrorist group and another person might see a group as freedom fighters. So we live in a different world. What the United States will code or say is a terrorist group, another group will say, no, these are freedom fighters. Like if you know me, I lived in Nicaragua eight years of my uh, life and, you know, Sandino, the Sandinistas were considered revolutionary and the United States often called these people terrorists. Behind me is when I immerse myself in a Colombian protest. And for a lot of people, they're bad, you know, don't go out there and protest, et cetera. But for these kids, young kids, students, they were out there protesting and I saw them, at, if you've seen my uh, footage on the Colombian protest, the Ante Motinis, the riot squad can be pretty brutal. So, you know, on Ontology is very important. And one of the things about ontology when it gets into actors, forums, and resources, you know, to what extent do we, we perceive these things? So for a lot of people, the United Nations taking the most, you know, the biggest international organization helps people. I worked at the United Nations uh, in their food program for about a year. And a lot of people really appreciated that. And that's what I focused on in other lectures where like the on the ground, aspect of the United Nations, we focus on a lot of problems like Rwanda, right? Rwanda, the United Nations failed to get into Rwanda. So people begin to question that. That becomes the reality of the United Nations. Uh, but at the same time, for a lot of people on the ground, it's very, very important uh, because it has the resources to do things. That's one of the things about the ontological approach that Hurd stresses. But I, I'll give it, in my opinion, a better understanding. Resources are very important. These big organizations can command resources and then do things that other organizations can't do. It fills an important gap. Best example, the Colombian peace process. As people know, here I am in Colombia. I do research on the Colombian peace process. Um, if you've seen another video, I'm in a, a store where they sell things of ex-combatants uh, in order to incorporate people. Colombia had the longest uh, civil war in Latin America. And uh, as uh, the 2000s, I think it was about 2011, I want to say, began a peace process. And one of the things was, how do you have the FARC, that's the guerrilla group of Colombia, lay down its arms? Well, that is the military weapon. It was the United Nations that got involved in order to help with that process. So it commanded the resources. Without the United Nations, uh, I don't think the Colombian peace process would have would have would have happened uh, as well as it did, even though some combatants went to fight. It was very, very successful. And one of the things that's interesting about it is how do you get these guerrillas after a war to lay down their weapons? Guerrillas are fighters, the insurgency. So in this case, the United Nations played an important role. So what do we do? Okay, so that's one point of how resources are important. And the whole forum thing is this opens up space. Space sometimes isn't like, you know, someone's on drugs is all my space or this is my space. But space is very important because we look at public space. What the United Nations gives in other regional and international organizations is space for countries that usually don't have a, a voice in the world to speak. Uh, a lot of people will criticize the United Nations and say, hey, that's, you know, there are dictators there, etc." Well, a dictator is just a dictator when you don't like someone. Uh, we support plenty of dictators, like Watoi Guinea's Teodoro Obeyang, who's been in power, correct me if I'm wrong, since 1969, is very uh, uh, strongly supported by the U.S. government. Even the conservative Washington Examiner uh, referred to him in a recent article as a President Obeyang. Yang. The guy is a brutal dictator that killed his own uncle when he overthrew him in 1969. I want to say it could be 79, but let's just say 69. Uh, the guy's been in power ever since. It's the only Spanish-speaking nation 
in Africa, and it has a large amount because it's a coastal state, archipelago state, it actually has a um, island as the capital city, but like most dictators, like happened in Myanmar, Burma, they change things around to throw people off. So now it's inland, but basically they have huge amounts of oil and mineral wealth. So Washington kind of runs with this dictator. So when we say, oh, you know, um, the United Nations is just a place for dictators, that's really people you just don't like. We support a ton of dictators. So uh, the point of this is the for as a forum, it gives people a voice, a public space that you shouldn't take away because we need this kind of understanding. I mean, this happened when Che Guevara gave a pretty intense speech at the United Nations and all these developing countries uh, applauded him, although the United States didn't like Che Guevara because he helped Castro overthrow Batista in Cuba in 1959. Uh, but he was very, very well received by smaller nations. And it's good to understand what other people are thinking. And I think the United States, you might correct me if I'm wrong, actually abstained from that or uh, something like that. But the, the point is, is that a lot of nations uh, can participate. The forum thing is space. So it's not like something concrete, but space for people to talk, to talk about certain things. And that's what international organizations, and it does that for women, it does that for children, it does that for indigenous groups. The uh, United Nations has a different uh, uh, agency to help indigenous people. So it gives people some kind of space. And that's what's important about the forum. As an actor, this is again, you know, it's 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 very, it depends on time, it depends on space. Like for example, I think one of the editions of the book, and that's one thing you're gonna get different editions, is that the um the um I think it gives Sudan as an example where the leader of Sudan was, you know, indicted in the ICC, the International Criminal Court, but he still continued to rule. But as an actor, it did play an important role because he couldn't go to some places and it legitimizes. If you read the section on theory, we're not going to get into that. That's more POS 160. But the idea of theory, constructivism, how we legitimate, how we perpetuate ideas. One of the things that international uh, organizations can do in the ICJ, which you'll be reading a chapter on, can legitimize and perpetuate and rewrite or write history. So it gives space for that. That was one of the points uh, that I mentioned is that in the Nicaraguan case, Nicaragua took the United States to court in the 1980s, and that gave the ICG, the, uh, the ICJ, sorry, uh, International Criminal Court, and that gave the Nicaraguan space to uh, talk about what the United States was doing was supporting the Contra, which were basically essentially terrorists uh, in their country, and because Nicaragua got ca caught up in the uh, uh, the uh, Cold War, and Ronald Reagan was very anti-Sandinista. Uh, Sandinista was the group that overthrew uh, Somoza in 1979, and Ronald Reagan became uh, president in 1980, 81. So you basically have um, the space for the small, the poorest country in Latin America after Haiti to actually take the world power to court, to take the world power to court. I mean, that's a pretty powerful thing and win. And they did. And Ronald Reagan, obviously, administration just ignored it. But still, it offered that kind of space. Uh, but they're not all good, these international organizations. Now, this will be uh, for later, but when you read about the WTO, when you read about IMF, World Bank, one of the editions of the Heard book it talks about for the IMF or World Bank, one of those, uh, Argentina. And I've been to Argentina uh, quite a bit. I, I did some research down there because Latin America is my area. And it's interesting, the indebtedness of Argentina just continually grows and grows and grows. So you basically have these kinds of issues all the time with um, these international organizations. And uh, recently, and I don't think this is in the book uh, because it was published too early, but the president, Macri, uh, the former president actually went with the IMF and it was very unpopular and they gave it the biggest bailout in history. It was like you know $5 billion or something like that. It was just a crazy amount. And the people do not like the IMF. That's the International Monetary Fund because it often comes with these structural readjustment policies that are not very amenable to teachers, doctors, etc. It's always cut, 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 cut. 
uh, and destroying a lot of livelihoods on the way, which actually uh, it becomes problematic because then you have protests and then you get the ex- the backlash creates the ex- opposite of what you want. But the IMF and World Bank keep doing those same similar uh, policies as you saw. If you had the opportunity to see in Ecuador, very, very interesting how um, Ecuador, they were going to cut subsidies for fuel, but p- poor people depend on them. And they even have the indigenous people out there and the uh, president, uh, uh, Moreno was actually pushed to Guayaquil uh, because he was going to basically be killed. So one of the things about these organizations, they do create space to help people in a certain way, but then they can kind of close space as well, particularly in economic policies that are not amenable to poor people. And they do continue, continue, continue with the same policies that aren't always that popular. Um, And we can get more into that. Uh, Like people always ask, well, why do they do that, et cetera? It's an ideological thing. I don't think they're always trying to be bad. I don't think they're trying to hurt people necessarily. But I do think uh, there's a little short-sightedness there. And it's funny, anytime, you know, people work for the IMF or World Bank, their salaries are through the roof. (laughs) They they, they actually, their lifestyle is the exact opposite. They always say, be more efficient, but they're not efficient at all. Uh, So anyways, that's very, very important to understand about these international institutions. And I also wanted to note that if you notice at the beginning of the class, the first three weeks, and then we have the midterm, we're basically doing international organizations, right? You know, the WTO, the uh, IMF, and in the in the uh, later heard edition book, I'm not sure which edition you have, they do do something on refugees. I'm going to touch on, you're going to see something I do on uh, Rio Magdalena in Colombia. And, uh, but, you know, if you have that uh, later edition, that's the newest edition, they do have a pretty decent chapter on refugees. Uh, but I, I, we're doing basically the first part of the class, which is focusing on these organizations, which I think are very, very important. And then for the last part of the class, we'll be focusing on the whole, that huge book that you, <laughs> you, you should buy on international law. We'll be focusing on the cases and everything on that. So this week, and then the next week, we finish with international organizations itself, and then go on with that very thick international uh, uh, law textbook that probably is given to most graduate schools. But regardless, this is a very important chapter, uh, the whole ontology, what the actors do, the forums, the resources, and I give good examples of those in this in this um, lecture, and which you will need to know. Uh, so, um, That is it for now. And I'll let you get back to the reading and everything else in your life. I hope you're all staying safe. We're still under these COVID uh, conditions. I did get uh, my, um, what do you call it? The vacuna, that's Spanish, the vaccination. uh, And I did not die. See, I thought the, the, um, I I thought the, um, the secondary effect would be death, but actually it isn't. So now I'm feeling great. So take care everyone. And please leave me a message in, Um, a community forum or shoot me an email if it's more of a personal nature.